Crazy Show. Okay, so we have a proposed ordinance, which will have a second reading on Tuesday, uh, relating to personnel, amending ordinance 033-2023, uh, relating to personnel policies, job descriptions, authorized positions, and the pay plan. With that, you have a proposal to increase the city of Florence mayor salary. It was a proposal to also raise the Florence City Council's salary, but that has been taken out of this ordinance and will be looked at that possibly in the future. Who added this to the agenda? Josh Hunt. Is he running for mayor? Well, because this isn't applicable to the current mayor. Okay, so it would go into effect for the next mayor, correct? Right. Okay. Whether that's the existing mayor getting reelected or a new mayor running and being elected. I just didn't know what his goals were for proposing this. Josh Hunt is our administration director slash city administrator. So he's our highest ranking city employee. Okay, so he's not elected. Correct. Wow, and he can propose things on the agenda? In fact, he is the person in conjunction, of course, with the city attorney's Um, and the mayor, who does most of the proposals that I've seen. As a new city council member, I have been learning, training, listening, asking questions all year long. I'm not the most experienced city council member, obviously, considering another council member has been there for almost 50 years. Okay, so what is the current salary of the mayor in Florence? Current salary is $51,710. When this was proposed, it was brought up that this has not been, this ordinance has not been changed for 18 years. What's important to also remember is that cost of living adjustment have been made during that time. So it's not that the mayors received that same pay, it's that a raise outside of the cost of living adjustments has not been looked at. Is this a full-time job or a part-time? For the city council members and the mayor, this job has the ability to be what you want to put into it. Does she have a job outside of this particular position? She's uh, an optometrist. What was voted on? What's made it through a first vote is a proposed base salary of $86,937. If you listen to the city council meeting, Josh, what he did was open records requests from similar size cities with the same mayor council government structure and found out for certain what the annual pay for their mayors were. So when he says a city in the Louisville area, he's not referring to Louisville. He's referring to a smaller city in that area with um, a population of 20,474. He did not release the names of the cities because he felt like, because he did an open records request to obtain that information, that he should not. He did provide those names of the cities to us. Whenever we receive packets of information uh, regarding what the upcoming meeting is going to entail, I have been advised that I cannot share any of the information with anyone or talk about it with anyone. And there's a disclosure on the packet, on the you know beginning of the packet itself, that says it would be unethical to do so. But so we how- can records request those packets as constituents, right? Yes. So that seems like I- some tomfoolery. I'm a city council member and I am supposed to be voting based on representing my constituents. And I would like to speak to my constituents about a vote or a constituent would like to talk to me about a vote. Why we would not be able to discuss the issue with those talking points in the memos. But it has been explained to me that I was elected based on what the voters feel like my positions are. And they've already voted for me based on how I feel about different things. 
and they're entrusting me to make these decisions and that I shouldn't have to go back to the voters or constituents to discuss matters before I vote on them. See, I disagree with that. I think that many of the government are doing that to keep we the people out of the decision making. And I think it's fabulous that you discuss with your constituents issues because it's it's an ongoing communication to represent the city. I agree with that. I do not feel an elected official should be motivated by compensation. I feel like the compensation should be um, respectful of the person's time that they are putting into the position. But I don't feel like it should be at a level where someone is running to get that pay. We don't know how these other councils work. You know, he throws out this money. Um, we don't know how much time those mayors are putting into this. Well, Leslie said it too. Like you can put in more and you can also do less. It's about what's required, you know, and it's a service. You're providing right. a service to your community. It, it's not a career. It shouldn't be. I, I didn't wake up one day and say, man, I, I would love to be on city council. I would have so much power and it would be so great. No, I felt like it was more of a calling whenever my friends and I were dealing with the city council and mayor regarding the issue of closing our only public pool in Boone County. We felt like our voices were not heard or considered and that the existing council were making decisions for the community without the community's needs or wants being considered. I care about people and I care about my community. I don't feel like people should be doing this job because, oh, well, it pays $20,000. Or the, the same with the mayor position. It should be something that you want to do, that you want to serve your community. If you watch the meeting, he makes a comment that one of the benefits of raising the salaries to attract a high caliber of candidates to this job. And for me, that was a very concerning statement. Everyone brings something different to the table. And these life experiences being diverse, I think, is wonderful. And I don't see anyone as less caliber than the other person because they don't have a master's degree. We're going to be think thing about things differently and from different aspects and be good representatives of the people. In the rest of this, I'm going to kind of give a little bit more brief overview of what that is. So in a mayor council form of government, the legislative bodies, so that's council members, they carry out duties such as enacting ordinances, levying taxes, and adopting the budget. The mayor holds the executive power exclusively, including vetoing power, oversight of all personnel, and managing city all city um, affairs. The mayor serves as the CEO of the organization, and I'll go into that a little bit more at the end of this. In a commission form of government, in contrast, um, while the mayor is still elected, the commissioners replace the council members in, in that setting, and the mayor serves as a voting member alongside the commissioners and the executive and legislative duties are shared among them. However, day-to-day -day operations are primarily managed by a city coordinator. And then you do have about 5% of cities that a city manager form of government and that closely resembles what a commission form of government is with the distinction that the city manager is appointed by the commissioners and the city manager assumes a bulk of the executive responsibilities while the commissioners vote on matters affecting the city. So that described both Florence, which has the city council, and Union, which has the commissioners. So in Union, the mayor votes alongside with the commissioners. Now, am I correct in saying that in Florence, the mayor doesn't vote alongside the council? The mayor votes if there is a tie, because there are six council members. So should the vote fall three to three, then the mayor would then vote. Very good. The way that I conducted the salary survey is a little bit different because the mayor position in our form of gov government is, is really different. So specifically, I did look at population, but I selected cities with 
the same form of government, so a mayor council form of government. And, and that was deliberate, um, that's particularly because the mayor's position in a mayor council form of government is you're asked a lot more of, of being a mayor in that type of situation. So currently, the mayor makes $51,710, which when compared to the city personnel pay plan is the second lowest paid position within our pay plan. I proposed within the memo that the compensation levels be changed to $86,937. So how does that stack up to other like cities? Well, once again, I will read the population set, um, size and the compensation levels, not the city name. But a central Kentucky city with a population of 37,000, their mayor is compensated currently at $92,745. If you project a 2.6% COLA raise over the next three years, and DLG will, will do that, I just use a pretty conservative figure of 2.6%. By the time this would take place in 2027, that same mayor would make $100,000 a year. Uh, let's see here in the Louisville area, not the city, Louisville, outside of there, there's a city with a population of 28, 1,474 people. That mayor makes $92,745. Once again, they'd be over 100,000 in a few years. Southwest Kentucky City with a very similar population of 31,180. That mayor makes $86,937. You could project that out to $93,000 um, in a few years. Central Kentucky City with a population of 31,394 people. The mayor makes 86,694. And you can project that out to just, just below $94,000 in a few years. And then another Central Kentucky City with a lower population of about 17,000. That mayor makes $78,378. And you can project that out to be about 85,000 in the next few years. So in summary, other mayors in similar cities make 40 to 50 percent more than the current mayor's salary. So one thing he said is that she was the lowest paid person. Um, I forget how he worded it among the personnel at the city. The difference is when we're hiring people to work as our accountant, like Linda Chapman, we are hiring someone based on their credentials. We are hiring them based on the fact that she, what kind of degrees she has, what kind of experience she has, and then we're paying her a competitive wage to retain her. The mayor was not hired. She, nor was I. We were elected by the people. So it's not apples to apples when you look at the, his pay, for example, versus the mayor's pay. Well, I'm just wondering if he cherry picked some of these salaries with these populations and if there isn't a broader spectrum of similar cities and if we could get you know a bird's eye view of what those salaries actually are in all these different cities I mean Kentucky's huge right 100 something 170 something counties and then in our county alone we have three cities within it so I, I feel like he cherry-picked which ones he was even looking at I wonder if his populations are from the U.S. Census of 2020. Another thing to realize is that, like he said, the cost of living adjustments will keep coming. So just because we're proposing to have the mayor salary be at 86937 of our tax dollars, this is going to increase with the cost of living adjustments. And, but it is our tax dollars that will be paying that. On Tuesday, we will be having a special meeting. A sp in a special meeting, we can vote, but it is not a business meeting where the public is has the time at the end to speak. Now, I will say that I have seen the mayor allow people to speak at the end of caucus meetings, which we normally save that for the business meetings. But with a special meeting, you have to stay on that special agenda, meaning that um, there won't be a lot of, if someone wants to bring up another topic, we won't be permitted. So during that meeting will be the second reading and vote on the mayor's salary. Last meeting, 
we had Tuesday was a business meeting and we voted. There were five council members that came to the meeting out of six. And there were four votes in favor of the new mayor salary increase. One thing I struggle with is in the city, we have housing prices soaring. We have rents escalating. We have homes being bought, single family residences being bought by LLCs that are inflating the rents. And people are losing their places to live. Our homeless population is increasing and there is not one emergency bed available in the city for them to sleep in. Children living in poverty in this city um, from diverse backgrounds that need uplifting to be able to thrive in our economy. But our city at this time does not have any programming that gives kids a safe place for them to go to be able to receive mentorships, education assistance, physical activity. Why don't we find other ways to support our families that are struggling so much right now instead of and spend money on people versus personnel? So if people want to let the council know, like, hey, we don't like this idea. This isn't about serving our community. This is about making a cushy government job. What should people do? Like, how should they reach out to these council people if they're not going to be able to speak at the next meeting? I can tell you that for me, I welcome phone calls, text messages. I'm happy to meet with people. My phone number is 859-907-6587. And I welcome my constituents to contact me anytime, whether you're happy about something or upset about something. I'm, I want to listen and do what I can to advocate for you. The other council members prefer email, except for Dave Osborne, who doesn't utilize email communication. So you would call him and leave him a voicemail. And the contact information for them is on the City of Florence website. There are six council members. We are not in districts. So each individual is represented by all six council members. You know, it's not cheap to live in Florence. The tax rate is much higher than a lot of other places in Boone County. I know it's higher, 7% higher, I think, than Hebron, which, you know, we don't, we're not incorporated. We don't have a city, but I just feel like if you have this kind of money sitting in your pot, maybe roll back some taxes, give people their money back. Well, that is a incredible idea. The gentleman that ran against the mayor actually campaigned on that idea. He served on city council for many years, so he was very familiar with the budget. And he did feel like there was room to roll back taxes. Thank you for all you do for our community. I appreciate you three. You're welcome.